I have a background in exercise science from my bachelor's and master's and PhD. I started looking at the effects of exercise in prostate cancer patients um, for, my, uh, for the last five years at the Dana Farber Cancer Institute. We are investigating the effects of exercise, cancer outcomes, side effects of treatment, or even prehabilitation before cancer treatment, or even after survivorship in cancer patients. So, in cancer patients, so in um, hormonal therapy, androgen dep deprivation therapy, and they are having patients who are on this treatment specifically having like loss of muscle mass, a lot of hormonal related side effects. So exercise has been proven or have, has been shown to be very effective in terms of um, having muscle mass, even improving quality of life and various bio, biomarkers as well. But um, in that setting, we were not able to look at the progression of um, cancer or PSA levels, as you may know, well, because they are PSA levels are really well controlled by the treatment. Patients in my study who are undergoing active surveillance, they are having prostate cancer already, but they are not treated for anything at all. So there was an opportunity where exercise can um, uh, benefit this patient if exercise can do to, for example, suppress cancer progression. In fact, the more like a driving rationale of this is we have already some of the preclinical trials or studies that are looking at it's like a mice, like running you know, mice, and we are looking at the tumor size and uh, metastasis in prostate cancer in, in animal models. And we see the effect of exercise in actually suppressing tum tumor progression. First thing is we found that there's um, the kind of universal benefits of exercise, which is they improve their heart and lung functions. So they improve their, I would say, cardio pulmonary capacity or fitness. Their fitness level has been improved. And on top of that, we measure their PSA levels and also PSA, other biochemical progression of prostate cancer. These patients had who were exercised, they had minus 1.1 reduction in prostate cancer specific antigen, process specific, uh, specific antigen levels. And also there is a direction where is the speed of PSA level reducing is also reduced, which is called PSA velocity. And that's what we found is significant uh, improvement by exercise. They're there doing two minutes of high intensity exercise and two minutes of break more active breaks, just running and recovering. And then they get back to this high intensity and repeating up to eight times in our particular study. So this has been proven to be more effective and also even more enjoyable. That's, that's another very interesting topic that high intensity interval training can be more, um, how to say more, I, I think time efficient or also even uh, enjoyable and effective. We cannot say it's, it's a definitive, like PSA level will decrease, but there might, there has been a, a suggestive or your PSA level might be reduced, but we need more studies to confirm these benefits. But what I can say is exercise, you know, it's not just for the PSA levels. Exercise in generally can improve their quality of life. It's been found in many, many exercise um, and cancer trials before, and also reducing anxiety. If you exercise, the fear can be reduced. Or so you are having more. Feel like, for example, we are having more control over your cancer. If you have, if you're doing exercise, you might you're feeling that you're getting healthy, aside of the actual benefits. So it also benefits their psychological health too. But there are lots of other benefits of exercise itself, but we have to be cautious in terms of the actual a reduction or suppression of cancer per se. We need more studies to confirm. Mean age of our patients are around 63 and they are likely to have some joint issues. And we've been found, we, we have found a lot of patients who already have those before starting our exercise program. So our exercise was specifically on treadmill so either they can run, if they can run, they can run. But 
if they cannot run, so we can modify exercise by increasing their incline rather running speed. If you're having cancer, but you're sitting on a bike, we don't know actually any, any evidence about um, cancer progression or how, how we can do, like a bike can do with the cancer. So that's another question we need to ask. So walking is a great exercise if you can do um, any walking exercise instead of sitting, any movement, walking is great. But we would definitely recommend that not just walking, but at least we would say brisk walking can be beneficial to, in, in, in generally like health outcomes. So um, for example, if you can walk, you, you should walk in intensity where you can really breathe or you can really like sing, we would say. Um, you can still talk, but still like a, a breathing heavily a little bit, started at least that intensity will be really recommended to get those benefits. I am cautiously optimistic that this will be where we are um, going towards and then in terms, not just for the prevention side, but also patients who are having cancer or during treatment. In general, I think exercise is, is really beneficial for cancer patients and modality doesn't matter. And I also want to mention that not just also aerobic exercise, there's a resistance exercise you can do. Resistance exercise, at least twice a week, we recommend uh, major muscle groups like chest, your back, and your quads and <laughs> hamstrings. So at least twice a week, we really recommend you to do those exercises as well.